mountain bike race competitively and I needed money to fund that so I'd bus tables at night during school and I'd come home at one o'clock in the morning, turn on the television at that late at night and there's really only one thing on it, 1 a.m. back in those days which was infomercial. So watching Tony Robbins and Carlton Sheets and all of those guys and that really just exposed me to the fact that there was other options available and options without limitations. First business venture was in the network marketing industry early 2000s. This is pre-social media, no YouTube, Facebook. But I had a mentor that had been working with me over the phone in California. And I said, after I graduate, I'm coming to learn from you until I figure this out. So that's what I did. I packed up my old Chevy truck with everything I owned from my dorm, said goodbye to the folks, drove to California. And I really made up my mind at that point that I was going to become an entrepreneur. I was basically going to die trying. I couldn't make rent or pay my cell phone bill one month. I was like, okay, I can get a gym membership, I can take a shower there, maybe I can find an air-conditioned rental unit, and I'll sleep there, and then I'll figure it out. The idea of having a job and giving up on everything I wanted to do in life was infinitely more painful than living in a storage unit. I put all the responsibility for success on something outside of myself. Either it was the business or the product or the marketing materials, but I thought success was gonna come as a result of those things. The biggest piece of advice I ever got was if you wanna go make, let's say, $50,000 a month, because that was my big lifelong dream at the time, mm -hmm. you have to become a person who's capable of achieving that. And he's like, you're not. You don't have any mastery of any skill sets whatsoever. I was like, ah. Oh. Okay, so from that point forward, I, I learned how to sell via writing, and it took me about a year, year and a half of just going into every course I could. And that really changed everything. I applied that skill to my network marketing business at the time, started recruiting people for the first time ever, built a team pretty quickly, of about three or 400 people. You help other people, they wanna work with you, and essentially there's this whole attraction marketing philosophy. And I ended up writing this little 50-page training manual for my team at the time that kind of talked about those philosophies and strategies. And all of a sudden, I had phone calls from people all over the world saying, hey, can I sell this manual to my team? So I ended up selling it for 40 bucks a copy online. I'd go down to Kinko's. I'd have 300 printed at a time for two, three bucks a piece. Put up a, a sales letter for it, put it on Google. And within, I think, three or four months, I was selling around $50,000 a month worth of that book. Because now I really felt like I was pursuing my talent and what I was good at, which was teaching. And so that really turned into an education company where we took the skills, which were brand new of online marketing, and taught it to that industry. And that turned into an eight-figure business. Making money and keeping money are two very different skill sets. The skills that'll allow you to make your first million dollars is completely different. It's not about your idea. It's not about how much money you can plow into it. If you can't sell you know, your backers from an investment standpoint, or your team from a hiring standpoint or at the end of the day your customers, it doesn't matter. Go learn how to sell, how to market, how to generate leads, how to generate traffic. Once you can do that, the world's your oyster. You can do anything. Because you can apply that skill set to absolutely anything in any industry that inspires you. And know from day one, it's gonna be all about people. Because that's the difference between making $250,000 a year and $250 million a year.